Okay, so what we've got here is the assassin forming out of the fog, right? And you can see some really neat effects are happening here. It's not just fog that's being put over top of another layer. Although it is that, uh, I've also created a bump map for the assassin herself. So if you go ahead and take that off for a second, you can still see there's a lot of texture going on here that's happening on this layer of the of the assassin. And so you get something that's kind of like this and it looks, and it's actually all flowing together. So the 3D texture that's happening on the, on the assassin is also happening in the fog. So it actually flows nicely together. And we're gonna go over how I did all of that. So we're gonna go to new composition. I'm gonna call this Fog Assassin at 1920 by 1080p and hit OK. And you can do whatever you want here. So I have a couple of fog assets, but you can also create this out of what's the fractal noise effects that's here on After Effects. And you can go to layer, new, solid, for example, type in fog, hit OK. Then you can go over to fractal noise in the effects, drag it over, drop it on top. And then you can change some settings. So you want to go something like cloudy, so it looks like it's actual fog. Change it to spline. You can reduce the brightness, up the contrast. You want more of a gray kind of a look for fog. Change the complexity, and then you can do things like uh, transform, hit the offset turbulence, drag it over, you know, whatever, six seconds, and move it over. So you get something moving something like that speed. And then keyframe the evolution, make it change however you want. And then you have this kind of fog changing thing. And it looks, it will look really nice once you've got it all done. And then you can mask out the shape of this fog however you know you want. And then with the mask, you go down to layer, hit M for mask. You can feather it out, increase or decrease the expansion so that you have something that looks like this. But I'm gonna use some assets of mine. Okay, so I have a couple assets that I've purchased off of Action VFX. Worked really well for what I was looking to do. And it's fog coming in from right to left, and it looks really nice. It's a really nice asset. But what I don't want is I don't want these wisps up here. They didn't fit my scene very well. So what I can do is I'm just going to mask that out. And I don't wanna have sharp edges, so I'm probably just gonna mark off the edges here, something like that. And that way, it only has the fog that's coming in from right to left. All right, and then another thing is, is it's not moving fast enough. So I'm gonna go to layer, time, enable time remapping. And then it just gives you two keyframes here. And then the closer you bring the one on the right to the front here, will change the speed of how fast that's flowing. If you stretch it out, obviously it'll, go lo it'll take longer. You bring it in it goes a lot faster so there's that so that's looking pretty good there and then i'm going to go to masks by hitting m open that up and i'm going to feather the mask and bring in the expansion a little bit just to make it look like it's fading out a bit better so now it looks like this so i think that's looking pretty good and another thing i need to do is because i want it to form up into this assassin character what i want to do is bring this over so i'm going to use this puppet tool to help reshape this fog all right so if i have it at the end here then i'm gonna do something like this and then i'm gonna reshape it by dragging this up and my masking is doing something a little you can do something like this and then the mask expansion there. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to flip this one on the bottom around. So I'm going to go to transform and flip horizontal. And then I'm going to bring it over. Something like that. And then without doing anything else, it kind of looks like this. One thing I just realized that I forgot to do was to time reverse this. So. I'm gonna go to the first layer, go to time, time reverse layer, and do the same on the other one, time, time reverse, and then, then I'm gonna have to change the time mapping, bring this back over here, like so. Then you get this kind of effect. Change the bottom one to screen, and the top one to lighter color. Where is it, there it is. 
So this is what I've got so far. I'm not really liking this overlap look here. So one thing you can do is just kind of adjust the, the mask, the mask path. What you do is just kind of something like, something like that. And then I'm going to add one more fog that I've got here. Low lying fog. I'm going to use this one here, bring that in. And then that just helps fill in the gaps a little bit, but I'm not going to use all of it. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut some of this out and again hit M for a mask. I'm going to feather that in, bring the mask expansion in a bit and turn that to screen. And then what I'm going to do here, so as it's kind of fading out here, I'm just going to have it kind of move from this position upwards, but shrinking and eventually disappearing. So you can keyframe your mask path and move it over to where the fog disappears and just make it kind of disappear. Bring all these points in. So you can see it's kind of just sucking in, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just change the position on that a little bit here. So it starts there and ends and ends up a bit, somewhere around there. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually duplicate all these layers, okay? So, and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to move this up to keep them all grouped together. And because I want to create two different pre-compositions here. So one is going to be the actual fog. So we're going to type in fog and hit OK. And then this is going to be our bump map because I want something more grayscale because I'm going to do some color correction or color changes on the fog layer. But this one here, I'm gonna pre-compose, move all attributes and call this one the bump map. And hit okay. And then what I can do is go into my fog layer here and create a new adjustment layer. And then I can change the settings however I want, right? So if I wanted to, for example, go into effects and type in curves, bring that in here i can change the color by you know bringing in a blue alpha channel maybe you know you got a moonlight coming in and so you want to make a little bit more blue scale maybe change the contrast just a tad just get some red out of there there it gives you a little bit more of a, a bluish moonlight or more of like a cinematic bluish moonlight that you would expect to see on a on tv yeah that's looking pretty good there and then we're going to go back to the fog assassin composition and the bump map we're going to go inside there and we're going to add another adjustment layer and change some of the settings there and we're going to bring in curves again and really crank up the contrast to whatever looks good here because in a bump map you're going to see the darker the color it is the more it looks like it's farther away and the lighter it is look like it's going to pop out at you so when you go back to the fog assassin what you can do now is you have, you're going to get rid of this bump map here. Oh, at least not be able to see it because we don't need that. We're going to go to the fog and we're going to type in CC glass and put this on top. And you can see right away that it's already created some sort of bump map. It's created its own and that's great, but we actually have our own bump map that we want to use. So we're going to go to bump map here. And, and then you can play around with a lot of these settings here. So you can increase or decrease the, the height of the bumps. And you can see, depending on what look you're going for, this almost makes it look like it's forming out a liquid, which would be kind of cool for whatever you want to do. Or you bring it down. You know, for me, it's probably going to be around 25, although I may mess around with it, maybe crank up the softness a bit. And I'm going to go to light, and I'm going to put my own lights in there. You have different options here. You can use your own lights, or you can use After Effects lighting. Advantages to both, for sure. I'm going to use the After Effects light, and I'm going to have... For my scene, I had a lantern that was on a desk over to the left, and the moonlight was kind of shining, was more of like the key light or maybe a little bit more to the right, just to add a little bit of contrast. So you can go to layer and bring in some lights here. So one could be, you know, something here, and we're going to, you know, don't need it that high. And we're just going to reposition this thing. Next, bring it over here. It's going to be very faded. So I'm gonna go to layer, light settings, really bring that down. I'm gonna create another light 
and make it more the moonlight, but almost on the white side. And bring that to the other side. So you can kind of see some orange, you can see the blue. And I'm not sure I'm liking that fog too much. I think there might be too much contrast. So I'm gonna to go to the adjustment layer and bring down that contrast. I'm gonna even reset that. Okay, so you end up with, looks like that, right? And we're almost done here. So what's next is then you bring in your footage. So I'm gonna go over to my footage here and bring that in. She's on a green screen. So I'm going to go ahead and transform this layer and fit to comp. And I'm going to the top and just work on this by itself for now. So I'm going to use a mask to mask out as much as possible. And then I'm going to bring in the key light effect to take out the green screen. So I've talked about this before, everything in that you want to be showing, you want it to be white. Everything in the background that you want to go away, you're gonna make it black. We're gonna bring in the CC glass before we do any color correcting here. So I wanna see what it looks like. Bring that on. And I'm gonna change it to our bump map. And you can see it's done some work already. And what we can do is it you know it really doesn't matter because what we're gonna do is have her fade in and out of here so if we start at let's say you know 100 height you're gonna keyframe that and then by the time she forms you're gonna make that the height zero she looks very much like this bump map here as well as the fog that's over top and then i'm gonna un solo that and bring this down to the bottom so that she's covered i'm going to resize it somewhere around here change the masking so that she appears so we'll actually bring this keyframe over somewhere around there and then bring all these down okay so you should after you do something like that you should have it look should have it look something like this. So yeah, some of the things is the masking didn't quite work out well. So what we can do here is we can again feather out the mask. Maybe right before here. Really feather that out. And then when you know it's supposed to be fully fully there, you can so we're gonna keyframe that. and bring it back to normal when we're done. Okay, so you end up with something like this here. That's looking pretty good. Need to do some color grading on the uh, actor herself, but what you can do here is, again, go to curves if you want something quick, bring that on, and then create some contrast. Again, you have to color it according to your scene, right? All right, so after you do that, it looks like this. And you have a couple options of what you can do after this is one is you can put in the background here and then render it all out. Or you can render this all out, put it into your project on top of your background and do some color correcting in Premiere or whatever you're using. And so there's a lot of different options, but this is what it looks like. And it, you know, I think it turned out pretty good. If you have any suggestions on how we could have done better, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. If you have anything you'd like to see done, on and how to whether it's an after effects or premiere or lighting or any other sort of tutorial when it comes to filmmaking please again leave those suggestions in the comments below that would really help us with knowing where to point our content again this is aaron from optics studios and i'll see you next time